Hello guys, my name is Metagoblin and today we're going to be counting down the top 5 very important things that are going to be releasing in Phase 3 of Classic WoW. Just before jumping guys, please give me a quick follow on Twitch if you want to catch any of my live streams. But anyway, let's jump into the video. So I'm not going to be talking about Blackwing Lair specifically in this video because I think most people probably know that Blackwing Lair is going to be released with Phase 3. We're going to talk about other things that aren't related which are probably equally as important. So the first big thing that's going to be coming out is there a set of different class quests for basically every single class which require you to go to Sunken Temple and a lot of the items are basically very class specific. A lot of them provide a very useful and niche bit of utility specific to your class which I mean some of them are basically useful for the entirety of World of Warcraft's life if you keep on you know keep hold of this item. For instance there is an item that I'm really looking forward to actually getting and it's a cloak that reduces your fall damage and it stacks with safe fall and I'm pretty sure there's no other item in the existence of World of Warcraft that has that exact effect. So it's a very unique item which I'm gonna you know basically get. There's a, a warlock item that gives you a free uh, summon of a void walker. There's a shaman trinket which essentially gives you a free water totem. There's quite a few useful trinkets that provide a on-use damage bonus, like for the hunter there's a 150 bonus attack power. The warrior have another one which basically has a shared similar cooldown to death wish, so a lot of really useful cost specific items are going to be coming out and they will be useful to you in raids most likely, and even if they're not specifically tuned for optimising raid DPS or raid efficiency effectiveness, whatever, tanking or healing, they will be useful in the open world. Um, just on your day-to-day -day life of playing your class, essentially. The next big thing is that a number of new best-in-slot enchants are going to be released. These are primarily going to be weapon enchants, for instance, Enchant Weapon Agility, which is the best-in-slot weapon enchant for hunters, especially if they dual will, because you can stack that to 30 agility, which is pretty Bob's your uncle. You've got Strength Enchant, which is probably going to be best-in-slot for, well, Feral Druids, because obviously there's other enchants that, um, you know, other DPS classes can get. I'm pretty sure there's new best in slot wrist enchant for, you've got mana regeneration and also healing power as well, so a few new useful enchants. The third very important item, which is an absolute godsend item, you will no longer have to go all the way to Ajara to get your Aquil Quintessence anymore, because you can basically get an Eternal one that lasts forever. It has a one hour cooldown though, so, you know, obviously you won't be able to just downs all of them yourself. But all you have to do really is get revered with the Hydraxian Warlords and talk to Dukai Hydraxis, whatever his name is, to basically get the item and there you go, Bob's your uncle, you can now douse pretty much everything in Molten Core without having to walk all the way back to Ajara every time, so that's obviously pretty cool. So for number four, we have a number of new rep awards going to be released for from the Foreign Brotherhood, Argent Dawn and the Timbermore. So for Foreign Brotherhood, the most... Probably the most useful items are going to be the new weapons that are going to be released, particularly Nightfall, which basically puts a debuff on the target to increase spell damage by 15% for 5 seconds. That's very useful for your warriors, your enhancement shamans and rep paladins to equip. There are also a number of fire resistance rewards, which are fairly redundant. It really depends on how difficult Blackwing Lair is actually going to be. They may be useful for certain mechanics in Blackwing Lair, which really do require quite a lot of fire resistance but most of the time you can you can basically just wing it with a greater fire protection potion anyway so really you know it's up to you you probably will save a lot of money by stacking fire resistance gear because then you'll never have to actually buy the potion but moving on if we look at the timbermore rep rewards most of them are actually tailored to feral druids so a feral druid are going to basically get some love in this phase most of the gear from these you know reps are kind of pre-grade best in slot kind of gear types because if you're already geared up then they might not be that particularly useful to you but nonetheless if you look at the rep rewards you've got like 21 strength on a piece of leather gear and obviously you get two attack power per one point of strength as a feral druid so a lot of very useful items are feral druid some items like there's shoulder items called wisdom of the timbermore which has a pretty good uh, mp5 effect on again like a pretty simple item that you can just craft obviously the only requirement is to get the actual um reputation of which doesn't take too long because you can actually do it in a raid group and just spam killing basically a load of bears. With the Andrew Dawn it's a fairly similar story, there are some items that are really tailored towards basically best in slot for Feral Druid with the increased dodge chance items. Apart from that there's a few other useful items but mainly the next most useful thing is the formula for powerful anti-venom which is going to be really useful in Zulgarub and probably likely Anchorage as well so it's like an item that you can make with basically a spider venom stack sack. So you can basically remove your own poisons without having to rely on a healer, so that, that is quite useful and 
basically everyone will need that. For number 5 there are a number of extra PvP BG specific rewards for the Warsong Gulch coming out. Apparently not all of them have actually been released even though they should have been with Phase 2 or something. I don't really know how Blizzard have done this, I think they've basically just kind of messed up a little bit. So items like the Law Keeper's Ring which is a really good MP5 item for you know pre raid best in slot gear. You've also got a Protector's Band which is you know again a pretty good uh, ring item with you know pretty decent DPS for Warriors and Rogues. I'm pretty sure there's, there's also some really useful item, uh, weapons as well, like the Protector's Sword, Sentinel's Blade and stuff like that. Um, even even like the staff itself has a really decent amount of MP5, so again, it's, it is mostly pre-raid gear, but then again, you know, it's there for you. If you're not, you know, raiding yet, you have, don't have a lot of raid gear, this, this kind of gear is actually going to be quite useful to you to basically progress you into Molten Core. The last bonus thing I'm going to talk about is the Dark Moon Fair. The main reason why you want to do the Dark Moon Fair in all honesty is for the trinket rewards that you can get with the card decks. Obviously you need to go out into the world and actually find all the cards and collect them all together and then turn them in. The neck rewards are decent but I would say the, the Amulet of the Dark Moon, the one that's tailored towards warriors and rogues isn't going to be that useful because most rogues are going to probably, and warriors and hunters, are probably going to have the Anixia Tooth Pendant by now, because obviously Anixia Head is 100% drop chance. And so, the other option, which is more tailored for spellcasters, is probably the more useful one, because again, it might take you ages to actually get a decent necklace as a spellcaster or healer. And obviously the Anixia Head, you can't really rely on that, because there isn't a neck reward from it. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. That's all the really useful things that are going to be, well, the useful and important things that are going to be coming out in Phase 3 for Classic WoW. Pretty much covered everything that there is to cover, but if I haven't, tell me in the comment section below and I'll like pin it or leave a love heart on it so people can see it. But anyway, my name is Metagoblin, until my next video, ciao.